making a cleat for a boat. I need a piece at 55, piece at 55, and my big piece for the top there at uh, 330 millimeters, um, and somewhere around there, a little piece like this for the end pieces of this tube here to make it look nice and clean. I'll hammer them roughly straight when I'm done, and I'll curve these to make it like almost a circle when I'm cutting it. I've marked it on each end so I don't have to worry about the cut width of the disc, which is, well, one millimeter, but still. Good way of getting a quick um, line on a thing is just to stick something in a vise like this and then just roughly go around like this. You can roughly keep it straight. And you just go around, around, around like this, and it's pretty good. That'll do. Good enough for jazz. With everything marked up and set up, it's time to go outside and uh, cut everything and grind everything and get it ready for TIG welding. One of the things with TIG that I've noticed is it's really good, uh, it's really necessary to get all the, the stainless really clean and not have like little burr bits, bits of oil in it. So, you know, it's, it's worth not only cleaning it up with a sander, but also sometimes running over it with acetone just to make sure there's no grease or dirt. It's really a difference between slightly blackened welds and, you know, those really shiny welds that you see on other YouTube videos from professional welders who know what they're doing. Um, I, I occasionally get blackened welds. It's partly because I can't back, um, what's it called, um, back purge the welds by filling the tube, for example, with argon as well. So you get the the um, air inside the tube coming through the surface of the weld, even though you've shielded the, 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 the weld on the, on the surface side. But um, for what we're doing, that doesn't really matter terribly much. This is all plenty strong enough, you know, it's not, it's not going on a nuclear reactor or something. So, um, you know, that's good enough. But <clears throat> I'm using a flap disc here to clean everything up. These flap discs are brilliant. You know, they, I've been using them for grinding as well instead of a grinder disc because they're a little bit quieter. Um, they make less sharp metal. And the real benefit of that is the little shards that come off are a little bit less sharp. And therefore, if they go in your eye, they come out on their own overnight. Whereas grinder discs really make these little horrible little sharp bits of metal that get stuck in there. And then you have to go to hospital and have Someone pried out with a needle. Not your eye, but the little bit of metal, which isn't terribly nice. So here I'm making the little saddles on the tubes so that um, they will link into the, um, the main bit of tube nicer. So you make like a little sort of nice little um, curved area so it then can weld in like this and just fit a bit nicer on the tube. So here was all my little bits and pieces to make this cleat. Put the nice long bolts. I've got to drill two holes through here and then drop them in there. I've rounded the heads. Nice little weld around them. These are the little end caps which I'm just going to straighten and um, hammer in. And then I've put a slight saddle on there so it slots on there a bit nicer. Fill it up with weld. And that should be about it. And then I'm going to have to polish it. So here is a very wonderful blueprint for this. I found that my old cleat's 330, um, the aluminium one, by finding a receipt from many, many years ago. Um, and I've just roughly copied the sort of dimensions. I want to have enough space between the two upstands to get a rope through. Um, I'm leaving these long and I might cut them down when I get to the boat. I'll just drill the holes in the boat, stick it in place, see what I think of it and maybe remove it and take a little bit of off the bottom and then get it so I'm happy with it. And then where these bolts go through like that, I'll put a nut on the end, tick the end just a little bit, just to hold it in place, and then weld around the base of the upstands. Should be good. Put a drill with a um, V block, pop things along a little bit. Drilling the holes on the pillar drill didn't quite work as planned, so I need to now get this hole 
slightly across using a file. I'll redirect it across and then drill the final thing and it will be still good. Getting there. These step drills, they work really well on stainless. This one's broken, as are most of my bits and pieces, but that's because I use them. They break. But these ones last quite a long time and put up with a fair amount of abuse. And then to polishing. So for polishing stainless steel, I use these discs here, which are sort of scotch bright discs, and then a final sort of flap disc that gives it like a, a polishing with a sort of clay type stuff. It, it's good enough for this. It's not a mirror finish, but it's, it's pretty good. So now, after a quick ferry trip across, here I am, and there is the cleat on top of the boat. Anyhow, so I've just taken a center line because my original lines for some reason are off. I know that's in the center. That's my um, inner force day storm sail fittings. And a very custody wind made that audio really bad after this point. So yeah, for some reason I got the points, uh, the um, center line off um, when I originally fitted the cleat and Shotley. It wasn't a very nice time, I was probably racing and it was very cold up there had a shotley had like a wind that was uh, called a lazy wind it would just go through you rather than around you anyhow here i'm using step drills again i'm cutting around the treadmaster decking and i've got the two holes in the middle there correctly lined up um you know on the center line so i'm just going to basically drill that out um, and then my idea is is i put the cleat in i bolt it from underneath and take the end of the um the end of the nuts to stop them from coming out and um, and then TIG round the, the hole outside, which should work quite well. So here is the cleat in place. Um, I've decided at this point I'm just going to have to cut the ends off a little bit, the, the ends that go onto the deck, just to lower the whole cleat down by about a centimetre so it matches the previous cleat that I've just shown there. And then I'll TIG all the way around the edge and um, that should make it really really strong it'll be bolted so mechanical joint and a welded joint cleat almost welded on just finishing off the last couple of bits just to make it ultra strong as you can see i really over weld but at a temperature that probably means that i'm not it's not uh, detrimental uh tied up the cable the um welding torch here across here to here to make life a little bit easier and it's almost done now with some nice paint on it it's uh, time to go really well i did other jobs on this trip but there you go she's ready for the water again so if you like this video please like and subscribe and click that little dinghy button thanks